Okay, we're back guys. So for number seven, we'll be looking at two forces F1 and F2 that act on a particle. We know that, we know that the force F1 is given by this equation, which is F1 equals minus I plus 2J Newton. So that's the value of the force. And we also know that F2 acts in the direction of the vector I plus J. Okay, what does the statement mean? This means that F2 is pretty much parallel to I plus J, but somewhere on another position. So we could say, for example, that I plus J is over here. So this is definitely I. You move an I across one I and another another J up here. So this is I plus J. This implies that for the same movement, we also have something called F2. So notice that these two are moving the same. That's what it means here. So this implies that F2 must be some scale factor bigger than I plus J. That's all you need to know for direction of motion. It's always a scale factor bigger than its other motion. So it could be less or it could be smaller. I don't know. It could be half I plus half J, 2I plus 2J. We don't know, so we call it KI plus KJ. Okay, so that's our vector F2. We also know that given that the resultant force of F1, F2 acts in the direction of the vector I plus 3J. So again, in fact, this is the same thing. So now we're going to have another vector. We know that the direction is I plus 3J. So how does I plus 3J look? It's like this. It's like one across and then three up. So something like, like this. Let's call this I plus 3J. And we know that F1 plus F2 also moves in that direction. So we'll call this F1 plus F2. And therefore that means F1 plus F2 must equal some scale factor. Let's call it C this time of I plus 3J. Easy. And now if you think about it, we have an equation we can just plug in and here they want us to find of course f2 so technically we just have to find this value by plugging in what we know of f1 what we know of f2 and then solve it simultaneously so hence replacing f1 we're going to have minus i plus 2j plus f2 which is now ki plus kj and all of this equals to ci plus 3c what you want to do here is something known as equating coefficients okay so what this means we look at both sides of the equation and we just match them in terms of i's and j's so we're going to match in terms of the i coefficient so we look at the left hand side what do we have on the left side we have negative one plus k and this is supposed to equal to c on the right side so these three now equating in terms of j coefficients, what do we have? We've got 2j, so we've got 2 here, plus kj, which is just k, equals on the right side, 3c. And voila, guys, you just solved this simultaneously. So this is actually the easy part now. So looking at this equation here, these, these pair of equations, we can simply just subtract, you know, these equations from each other. So subtracting the top from the bottom, we can do minus 1 take away 2 will give us minus 3. K take away K is 0. C take away 3C is minus 2C. And thus C equals, divided by minus 2, will give us 1.5. And then picking one equation, I'll pick this one up here, the one with minus 1 plus K. So using minus 1 plus K equals C. Replacing C here and adding 1, we're going to have K equals 1 plus C, i.e. 1 plus 1.5 will give us 2.5. Ah. <sighs> Not bad, is it? <laughs> so, therefore, going back to the top, F2 equals K plus 1, I plus J. Hence, F2 equals 2.5 I plus 2.5 J. That's it, guys. Con if you guys got this answer, congratulate congratulate yourself. Oh, I can't even say the word. Give yourself a big pat on the back and give yourself a big congratulations. And, again, if you want to discuss any of these problems, how I got this solution, how we can... You know, think in this way, just, you know, drop a comment below and you guys in a bit.